Hi folks, thanks again for joining me for another watercolour demonstration. This time I'm in portrait mode, just for a change, just try to throw it the other way around. And I'm paint, using a reference photograph I took um, a while back, whilst around uh, Sutton Park. Um, so let me show you the reference photograph. So it's a very simple little scene. Got our path here winding its way up into the sort of middle ground. I just wanted to emphasise the shadows a little bit more than what you can see in the picture. And then we've got some distant trees and whatnot. I'll add a, I wanted to add a figure as well. Quick mention of my latest book as well, Watercolour Painting Made Simple Volume 3 by myself. Got nine paintings in there, step-by-step -step photographic guide through all of them, just to help you on your way. That's available on Amazon in softback, hardback and Kindle. So the colours for this one, we've got ultramarine, lemon yellow, um, didn't use the Payne's Grey or the alizarin on this one, raw sienna, burnt umber and light red. And most of it done with a large Ron Ranson hake and a, a number three rigger and a, and a size zero little brush there. This isn't too much water going on, just enough to stop it from buckling really, because I haven't really got to blend much sky or anything in the background. In fact, all I'm going to do is just have a bit of, bit of raw sienna. I'm just looking to try to stop that rattly noise. Then I'm going to put in a bit of ultramarine. Stack a bit of sky at the top. Oh, it's too early to dry. Um, didn't want to put that in quite as wet as I did, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to mix the ultramarine and the raw sienna together. Now I'm just going to pop in a few little background trees. You just about see these behind the uh, ones in front. I'm just using the corner of the brush just to flick them in. I might even introduce a bit of light red as well while I'm at it. Give it goes all the way across that side. And then there are, there are a few in front of this, so I'm going to start them off by scraping in some of the uh, trunks. Then I'm going to take the rigger brush. I'll probably have to come back to this in a bit when it's, when it's dried. I'm quite sure how strong this is going to go on. I'm just going to continue some of these and just have these. Slightly ahead of these ones I've just put in. So I'm going right up to the top. What I'm going to do is give that a quick dry. Put a few more of these in. So I'm just using number three rig, a raw sienna, ultramarine. And I'm just going to put in one or two just a little bit stronger. You see when it's, when it's at the top, I'm just sort of spraying it out a little bit. A bit more water, a bit more paint. And have a bigger one over here. There. 
That one's a little bit smaller, just a little bit further away. Just keep reloading the brush. And we have one over here. And what I might also do as well is just add a, just a hint of foliage on there. So I'm just drying the brush. Just, just going to dry brush just a little bit of autumn colour on there. Just take a little bit of raw sienna. Maybe a touch of light red as well. And just dab a little bit of just a hint of it, not too much. That's all. That's all that needs. I'm going to clean the brush and I'm going to go into a bit of lemon yellow then. A bit of lemon yellow. It's brightening up now. There's some grass down at the base of these trees. So push it right up to the trees. A bit of ultramarine just to change the so it just changed it a little bit. A bit of light red in there as well. Now on the left hand side we've got a few little bushes so I'm just going to pop these ones in like this something like a bit of red Let's get back to the lighter colours. So I've cleaned the brush. I'm back into the lemon yellow, a bit of raw sienna in there as well. And again, just changing, just varying the colour as I bring that down a little bit on this side as well. Just saving a little path area in the centre. I'll come, I'll come back to that in a minute. Touch of burnt umber in there as well. So I'm just taking that down to the bottom. Let's put this path in next. Just want to get this. Right, I'm going to clean the brush. Let's make sure this is flat against the, the uh, easel. So I'm just re-clipping it there, just pull it tight, stick the bulldog clip right next to it. And the path, I'm just going to go with a bit of brown, a bit of red, a bit of blue. Brown, red, blue. And it sort of snakes its way around there, something like that. Yeah, that'll do for the path. Let's clean the brush and then push the grass right up to the edges. So I'm just going raw sienna, lemon yellow, and just pushing this grass right up to the edge of this path, filling in some of those gaps. Touch of ultramarine there just to change that little little bit. So you can imagine the path, it's sort of going all out and then it's just sort of swinging around that edge, around there. Bit of red, bit of blue. Now, just adding a few little slightly darker tones now. Don't want to get too balmy. So just sort of dab, dab, dab and then stop and just keep looking, see what you've done. See if it warrants any more or just try and restrain yourself as much as possible. Let's clean the brush. Back to some lights, I think. In fact, 
give that a quick dry. quite flat against the board. Let's just make sure that's tight. Just pulling it flat. Refix it. Right then. So I'm going back to I'm going to get back to the light. So I've cleaned the brush. Just squeezing the excess off. Don't want too much water. And I'm just going to give it a bit of lemon yellow and just a few bits of these greens, stock extra layer. Let's get a bit in there as well. Just sort of, sort of blending it all together, ready for when I pop the shadows in. And I'm, I'm hoping that when I pop the shadows in, it just brings it to life. A bit of raw sienna in there as well. bit of red now gotta be careful with that red it's such a strong colour I'm just giving yellow blue just varying it slightly a bit more on this side a bit of red Bit of blue, bit of brown, sort of darker, a few little darker tones here than there. See a few darks around there. I'm just going to pop a few little darks around there as well. red slightly there's not a lot of red in the in the reference photograph but it just helps add a bit of color to the thing not too much right in I think before I put the shadows in I'm just gonna pop a, a figure in first just want to make sure it's dry any grasses in yet have I? I'm just gonna have a few bits of grass here and there just dot them around a bit I meant to flick a few in my finger now, but I, I forgot to do that. I sort of lighten that and then... Well, I'll come back to that in a minute. Let's just pop this uh, little figure in. I'm going to put them in dark, try and get some light effects. Instantly, I've got a new brush here. It's a little size zero. Just to replace that other one I was using, it just kept bending into funny shapes. It, it was so frustrating. So I'm hoping that this one 
works a bit better. Um, so I'm just trying to work out the scale of this thing. So let's so. his head and I'm going to put a little dog just in front of him walking off down there I'll put the shadows in in a bit just make him a little bit darker right, I'll come back to that in a minute Right then, shadows. Now it was quite a sunny day. I'm trying to work out which way the shadow. They seem to be going diagonally sort of across like that. So I'm going to put them in, sort of come in across the, that way. So, um, so shake off the excess water. So I'm just giving a bit of brown, bit of red, bit of blue. I'm looking for sort of bluey grey type of colour. And ideally, I want to get enough on the brush to just do the whole lot in one go. Right then, so something like that. And then we're, we're sort of, if you can imagine, that it's sort of like picking out individual trees that are on this side. shadows amongst all these as well I think. A quick draw. shadow colour and just pull it across here as well from these little figures. Oh, I'm just going to pop in a Popping a few bits of grass without overdoing it, which is very, very easy. So I just want to, all I want to do is just Get these tones just something I've, I've put that in just a bit I've put that the figure in too dark basically but I'm, I just want to try and match slightly the tones around it so I'm just going to dry the brush I'm just going to have a bit of 
bit of brown, bit of red, bit of blue, and quite a dark. And just try and match the odd little bit of that tone here and there. I think that's all it needed, just to darken some of the tones around by where the figure is, just so it didn't stand out as much, it was standing out too much. Yeah, I think I'll, uh, I think I'll stop messing about with it now. So let's give that a quick dry. I think I'm just gonna sky and just finish it pop my name in the corner I'm gonna call this one done I think stop messing about with it so I'll just sign it down the bottom there right then so let's let's stick a, a mount on it and see what it looks like so here's the finished painting all mounted up ready to hang up so if I just show you the reference photo again that I was working with, I haven't changed. So, well, the, the main thing is I think I've sort of emphasised the shadows a little bit more, cutting straight across the path. Gives it more a uh, sense of light, like a much sunnier day. Although it was quite sunny, I thought I do, I, I do prefer to sort of emphasise the shadows. So starting these trees here, Made a bit of a mess of those, if I'm honest with you. They, they look a bit, uh, a bit rubbish, but uh, something to, some to learn for next time. And then down, but I've got a path sort of snakes its way all the way up to our little figures there. Little shadows coming off, and you see. Just try to emphasise the shadows more than what's in the photograph. Imagine the lights coming in this direction. Big some trees just out of shot, casting shadows across the path there. And then, because I put that in a little slightly darker, the figures. So I just wanted to match it, the, the tones either side of it, just so that it sort of blended in a little bit better as it stood out too much. That's my simple impression of this photograph. So I hope you enjoy that. Thanks as always for watching and for your support. Very much appreciated. I hope you was painting along with me. So if you've got any questions, please, please don't hesitate to ask. Keep practicing and I'll see you again soon.